Today, um, yeah, yeah, it's a very crazy, crazy week. I have to say, it's um, it's non-stop. So now I finally feel one tenth of what um, Venerable Master Ching Gong and Venerable uh, Wu Ling and Venerable She Wu feel like having a full schedule, <laughs> non-stop. Um, but yes, uh, we should continue this session, and uh, this session will not stop, no matter how busy we are, uh, with or without me. So I hope that we can continue this as well. Um, the Dhamma cannot stop, um, no matter how busy we are. Uh, so we have the Venerable Kajayana uh, last week. Uh, if anyone remember what is the best thing or famous thing about Kajayana, can, can you guys recall? What's the, what's the most um, memorable thing about Venerable Kajayana? Jia Zhan Yan. Giving talks, that's right. What kind of talks? Because um, he's, he has another brother, Dhamma brother, that also very good at giving talks. But what makes him special? Yeah. He, uh, his other brother is, uh, I think it's Suputi, I think. Suputi? No, Suputi, yeah. Very good in uh, preaching, giving the, uh, yeah, Suputi. Very good in uh, preaching. But he's, he's very good at discourse. Like, hey man, you have any questions? And then it's, it's kind of one of like the debate that you see on the forum. And he's able to bring out the Dharma, the taste of Dharma from, you know, discussing about it. Um, for example, when you, um, if you understand Mandarin, um, Venerable Ching Kong, Master Ching Kong, when he, back in Singapore, 90s and 80s, he has given a lot of talks in Q&A. Everyone asks him every kind, all kinds of questions. All the, you know, questions from day-to-day -day stuff, you know, my son, my family, and into the, you know, the um, Buddhist stuff. He able to answer it. And sometimes his answer is so simple. We're like, yeah, like, you know, like it's so um, mundane, so everyday, that we, we, didn't, we didn't think of it. We tried to go too deep and, you know, bring up all the terminologies and stuff. So he's very good at bringing it, you know, a knock a notch, bringing down a notch so that we understand it, we're able to practice it. So Kayakana is very good in this. And last week we talked about, you know, there's a riddle before he met Buddha, before he became a monk, there's a riddle um, that happens in a rock. So the rock just being uncovered like archaeologists, uncover it and that no one understands the language. So Kayakana is a very talented man and he has practiced a lot of languages, so he translated it into the common tongue, Pali or uh, Sanskrit, one of them. And this is all about Buddhism stuff. And we have a hindsight of uh, Buddha Dhamma right now. We can understand, you know, the well at least we under we heard of the word Four Noble Truths, emptiness. So it's 
a little bit easier for us to answer with the knowledge passed down to us. But for them, they are, they are, you know, everything is new. All right, the concept is um, not established. Everyone has their own way of looking at this in the world. Even nowadays, the same. But now we have Buddha Dharma passing down for two thousand five hundred years or three thousand years. Um, so we have that foundation. So, so what happened is Kayakana cannot answer the question. He can only translate it. And um, that means that he needs to find Buddha. Because Buddha was well known at the time as one of the wisest person. Like Buddha has already become a Buddha at the age of 30. And he was around that time um, looking for someone to answer the riddles. So the riddles, um, you know, goes with six heavens. You know, who's the king of king? Saint of saint? Who is the fool? Who is the wise? That's the first part. Um, how can one leave impurities behind? How does one attain quenching of sufferings? Who drowns in the sea of samsara? And samsara means life and death um, in a broader scale. Who roams the land of liberation freely? Yeah, land of liberation. So we think about, okay, what do you mean by liberation, right? Um, no one is, no one can give a definite answer on this one. Everyone's like, hmm. And he found the Buddha and the Buddha answered six heavens as king of king. So we have the cosmology, Buddhist cosmology. We, when we started this um, Buddha story in the very beginning, we talk about cosmology. Of, um, it's just good, just good to know, you know, six heavens. And then you have the um, form heaven, form realm. Form realm has no male and female. Six heavens, which is the current um, desire realm, has male and female. Uh, form realm is once you attain meditation, first, like in Zen, they have Chu Tan. You know, the first Dhyana, they no longer have, they're able to suppress the desire, basic desires. And so they don't need to eat. So, yes, no more cooking, no more um, kitchen, no more washing dishes. Um, they have attained um, no desires, you know, sexual desires. So they have no male and female. So, form realm is the blueprint of pure life, in a sense. The pure land, the lower standard, they constructed based on form realm. So Tian, in the in Final Life Sutra, they mention um, the people there might look like people from form realm, but their merits and virtues is surpassing it. But they say it looks like form realm. So based on our knowledge of Buddha, Buddha cosmology, oh, okay, form realm is like that. So everyone is no male or female, just form, a form, a body. And they don't need to eat. So they rely on they are rely on meditative tranquility. So they don't feel hungry because there's no mechanical needs. There's no mechanical body. It's a spiritual body. And highest one is formless realm inside the six realms. Formless realm is the place that Buddha do not encourage us to go. Because in formless realm, everyone is kind of getting too extreme in the emptiness thing. That means emptiness is good for us. But if you go too much to attach to emptiness, you kind of go all the way into the formless realm. So no one in formless realm can be a Buddha because they are not, they are attaching to the emptiness and they, they get stuck there. They don't, you know, they don't, it's, it's pitch black. All right. I just, I just heard Master Ching Kong, uh, one of the speech say that people who have Wu Xiang Ding, you know, the meditative tranquility that is too, too heavy on Meditation, not enough wisdom. Everything is pitch black. That's sleeping, basically, you know, or you die. When you die, it's pitch black uh, at that moment. Mm. So people, we call it ignorance, right? That is not Buddha's uh, enlightenment path. The path is, yes, you still enough against all the troubles in the world, but you still have jinjie. You know, in, in Zen, it's very common. They have 51 layers of um, situations to handle inside meditative tranquility. So those things are very important because they give you the context of um, what Buddha is talking about. So basically inside you have 51 different situations, 51 different, say, hot, cold, um, bright, uh, dark, red, white, all sorts of things, or people coming, kill you, people coming, praising you, all sorts of you know, situations happening to you. You have to remain still, but you cannot shut your door and say, oh, I don't want to see you. No. You have to see them, but not move by them. That's how you become Buddha. 
So basically, King of King in this context is the six heavens, and the Saint of Saint, of course, is the Buddha, because Buddha is the one that found out this truth, that able to get out of six realms, um, and fool. Who is the fool? Fool though, is the one that blinded by the ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of the truth. Ignorance of the, you know, of their weakness. Ignorance of you know what they need to do in order to improve themselves. Uh, wise is the one who quell all troubles and afflictions of the heart. Basically, fun now. You know the troubles of your heart. You know all sorts of happiness, sadness, ones. You know uh, dislikes. Um, up and uh, all sorts of trouble, like like things coming on you. How do you handle it? All this thing needs to. All this thing cannot leave the heart, right? If the heart is in the right place, or if the heart is settled, no matter how troublesome things are, you still have that will, power, and you still have that willingness to go through it. If your heart is not there. No matter how well the condition is around you, you don't really want to continue this. You know, maybe the, the role you on, the task you and 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 uh, the task people and uh, trust you with, or you know, a sort of relationships or uh, an engagements or even the practice. You know, those things rely on your heart, and everyone has different conditions. You know, you guys born in a different condition, even within the same parents, different. Um, why do I think of Malay with some for some reason? Different attitude, right? Different, different characters, right? Ellen, do you have uh, siblings? Yes. Who do you have? Sister. Little brother. Little brother. Uh, would you say you're exactly the same as your brother, or are you guys different? different. How different? Mm. We have different personalities, mm. and we have like a different character, and we have like. DNA is differently. Oh, <laughs> okay, I can see that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but it came from the same blueprint, right? Yeah, same, same uh, original file, right? Copy from the same file. But then it, it, it merged into a different personality as well, right? So how different? For example. Like, so, uh, he, likes, like, uh, he likes like stuff that have a stronger flavor. Oh, spicy? Wow, do you? Oh, what you like a more lighter flavor as well? Mm. See, flavor profiles. Um, you know, foods, characters, temper, right? Temper. Uh, it's very different, even though they came from the same parents. So, so you know, how can we say that everyone's the same? But then, why are we here? Right? Why are we learning this? Is you know what what touches us? What what Master has been touching us is about the nature beneath all this condition is the same. It's not, it's not to say that you cannot be unique. Every Buddha is unique. You can see Amitabha Buddhas, even his um, assistant Bodhisattva Guan Yin and Bodhisattva Mahas, uh, Das, oh my god, I forgot that. Das, Sanskrit. Mahasrama, something like that. Sorry, sorry. Okay, um, they are different. They, they appear different, right? They look different. But they share the same Buddha nature, right? They share the same goal. That's why they're together. Uh, they share, they're trying to reach out to everyone, no matter how um, you know, heavy their karma is, you know, negative karma is, even in the lowest realm of hell. They're trying to reach them, right? Let alone us. So we're here. So that's why wise is the one who quell all troubles and affliction of the heart. Once you have the heart, you have everything. Um, removing greed. Okay, what else? So the, the remaining of the riddles is how can one leave impurities behind? How does one attain quenching of sufferings? Impurities, right? Buddha has um, helped us to categorize it. It's not that simple, but if you categorize it, it's just this tree, right? If you want to bring it out, you can bring a lot of cases. So greed, right? Hatred, ignorance, right? If you want to have a more extensive version, Tan Sun Su Man Yi. So arrogance and doubt, right? In pure land, doubt is the worst. Because not worst, it's the biggest obstacle. 
in our practice. Because greed, hatred, ignorance can be managed if we practice, if we understand, if we're aware. Um, arrogance as well will be humbled by the real life. Right? You go out there and try to be arrogant and see how it goes. Um, there, this can be handled, but with doubt, it's hard. You can't say, you must believe, you know, like, it doesn't work, even though, you know, there are certain cultures that try to do that, but it doesn't work. You know, even they go burn on stake, they still say, no, it's, it's something, it's an affair of the heart, so to speak. It's, you gotta have to have a little bit of leap of faith, not saying that blind Buddhism is not about blind faith, even though Pure Land is the one that people might think is closest to, oh, believe in me and you'll be safe. It's true, but the condition to believe in Pure Land is built upon the foundation of deep cultivation in Buddhism. And this life, you may not feel like deep cultivation in Buddhism. I just born into this world, you know, get through my day to day, you know, sometimes I play some games, watch some TVs, and then, uh, you know, I might hang out with my mom in the temple, uh, listen one or two Dharma. That's not deep. But then, for some reason, I just drawn to Amitabha Buddha. So we understand that there is past life. There is present life, there is future life. And our past life, we have been done this a lot of times. So we have accumulated a certain amount of capital, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Dharma capital. Dharma seeds, so to speak. Right? In our bank. You know, there's a bank, right? Not here. This is just a, you know, like ATM or like an app. You see, this is your bank app, right? Once you die, you go back to the actual bank. We call it Alaya Consciousness, right? The Eighth Consciousness. So you have a bank, you have to accumulate many times. Like one of those games where we die, we respawn, right? As a new character. Something like that. We respawn again, we forgot everything. But then somehow your brother is your past life someone. And then you met again, this life. Oh, it's you again. So basically, that's how it feels sometimes. Oh, it's you again, my sister. Oh, it's you again, my brother. So this is condition. It, it will continue to go back because the archive never lost. They will never forget. What you forget is basically, maybe the app is broken, but the library is not broken. All right? So you will always have your archive there. When time is right, when condition is right, it will be drawn. So now is your condition. So this is one of your conditions, right? There are many conditions. You can go out and continue the life as usual. So which one is more heavy, right? Now you have to wait. Dharma. But at the same time, real life. My parents, my uh, family, maybe in future, your wife, your husband, your children. So those things are dragging you in different directions. And they are not necessarily against each other. It depends on how you manage it. That's why wise is the one who quelled the affairs of the heart. It's not, it's not like, oh, if I go to the temple and pray every day, that means I'll go to Pure Land. How much in your heart is, how much is Amitabha name means to you in your heart? Just like relationship, right? How much this person means a lot to you? If they mean a lot to you, naturally we'll do everything you can for that. So that's, that's why when you think of Amitabha and those monks that are successful like Master Shinkong, only until 82 years of age, he has that feel that Amitabha is actually number one. He's very smart, venerable. He knows everything, almost everything, right? In the sense of, he didn't claim he knows everything. He very well versed in every sutra. And then every sutra came from Buddha. He loved big sutra. He loved Hua Yan Jing, Avatamsaka Sutra, you know, all the fancies. Those are very big, deep, profound theories big profound practice. But then at the age of 82, he realized this body is turning 82 years old. I've been talking Dharma for a couple of decades. Where am I going now? After all this talk, all this praise, all these accolades, all this you know, praise from the world, am I getting anywhere? It's better go back to Amitabha because Amitabha already pointed out very clear. If you believe in him, you understand his name, and then you vow to go into his land and then you chant his name. No matter how crazy your situation is at the moment, once you're willing to put Amitabha as number one, not only one, number one, you can do your things as usual. Go out, continue your hobby and stuff. But then when it comes to Amitabha, you drop everything, you focus on Amitabha. And then you continue back in your obligation. 
then you will have a stronger guarantee to go to pure land. You will definitely go to pure land. So that's the basis of belief. So why am I talking all this big circle about that? One thing is I always talk in circles, unfortunately. Second thing is Amitabha Buddha um, or the Buddha's teaching, right? Everything can be solved, no matter how big your problem is. All right, even you are in lower rim. As long as you have the vow to go to pure land, vow to change. Vow to go to pure land means vow to change my attitude from greedy to generous, from uh, hatred or annoyance into you know, patience, into compassion, from ignorance to humility to learn, humble to learn, from arrogance to you know, servicing people, an uh, attitude of servitude, right? to everyone. So <coughs> willing to do that means you're willing to go to pure land. Doubt is means that everything Buddhas teach, you always like, oh, is it true? Yes, Buddha did say you can test my theory in the world, right? And you should never take words at its face value. Always learn how to you know practice um, critical thinking in a sense. But the mind can only do so much, right? Sometimes what he knows is more than what we could comprehend. Hence he has said incomprehensible. Not because you cannot think, because you could not think. Because the mind is a restriction. In incomprehensible, un, unable to put to words. That's how we translate it. Bukasi, incomprehensible. Bukayi, unable to uh, put to words. Not because Buddha say, in my name you cannot say anything. It's, even you work so hard with your smartest mind in the world, trying to comprehend you know, the edge of the Dharma teaching. You could not. Something you cannot just use this mere processor to work. You need to go back to the original of the processor. right? Processor means this one is just, say, like an app of your library. The actual heart is the one that originates everything. Right? People keep saying creation, God. Who is this? Let's go straight to it. Buddhism is like, let's put away all these allegories. If you really understand, your heart is your creator. Your heart, your real heart, not talking about this one. In the Pure Land, um, in the tri learning ceremony, they will talk about this. Three kinds of heart. Right? First is your physical heart, medical one. Right? Medical heart. The one that pumps blood. All right? The second one is your yuan jiu is the conditional one, like alaya consciousness, that library I'm talking about. It's still not your true heart. Last one is your Buddha nature, the one that is immediate. It doesn't wait 10 minutes to process. No, it doesn't break into this life, present life and past life. There is no time, there's no limit on this. Because right? right now we're here mostly, we, we kind of comprehend, we kind of can go into that level. So. That heart is our real heart. The heart has no time. So right now we talk about past life, present life, future life. That's already filtered. Filtered with, we call it shi, consciousness. Maitreya Buddha is trying to point to us. No matter how many thinking and thoughts, and because he's very systematic in his thinking, in his um, Bai Fa Ming Wen Lu, the hundred consciousness teaching. Basically it's like a scientific categories of mind. They categorize time, they categorize our mind activities, basically your brain science. Yep. Everything they have can categorize, you categorize. Plus the intention of leading you into your heart. So the third one is your kind of heart. That heart, I love how um Trisini ceremony describe it, you know. Um, um basically it's immediate, it's quick, it's just it's in the present. The only reason why it does not show its full meritorious qualities is because we lock it up too long and it's it can only hide it cannot disappear right it can only be twisted like the moon reflected into the water pond that water pond can be twisted right sometimes the moon is round right but when you reflect it what does it look like sometimes wavy that's us right our moon is there but we don't know the moon. We always look at the reflection. And then we get caught up by the frogs, caught up by the by the algae and all the stuff coming up. Oh my god, and then the, the storm, the tornado, blah blah blah. Right? If you go to hell and then the whole thing just break up. But then the moon is still moon. That is you. 
So think of it as think of it as, think of it as the mirror, right? Um, your true heart is like a mirror. Immediately, it's there. It's gone. It's gone. In Leo Fan, they even mentioned a little bit of that. So that's true heart. So going to pure land means going back to that, all right? Leaving this behind. Attaining perfection of precept, discipline, samadhi, or concentration, prashna, or wisdom, will one end this, the cycle of sufferings. So how do we stop this? How do we stop this, um, this thing? This thing that we are coming back for? You know, how do we stop these projections? You know, this game, you know, spawning and spawning. Close the computer. Shut down the computer. Go back to your real life. Right? How? What stops us? Attachment. Oh, I want this game. I'm caught up in that character. I need to be dead. You, you restrict yourself to that fake version of yourself. Not fake. Reflected version of yourself. Then you forgot. Oh, okay. I'm actually not in that. It's just a game. It's just a movie. It's just a dream. But then it's painful. It's hurt. It's sad. Or it's happy. It's joyous. It's pleasurable. So you, 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 you get caught up in that feeling and then you can't get out of it. So that's, that's why we need precepts, samadhi, prashna, or discipline, concentration, wisdom. All right? Everything we say here, right? Everything we hear from Buddha Dharma, it sounds right. Yeah, you know, just three stuff, right? Oh, greed, yeah, greed, hatred, ignorance. But then if we, if we understand deeply, then we realize there's so many things to handle. And sometimes we felt helpless or even useless or even hopeless, or even despair, those are also a reflection of how disconnected we are with our true self. Right? At the same time, if we felt arrogant, pride, or very, you know, like, egoistical or something on the other spectrum, we also disconnect with our true self. But what happened when you were thrown into a situation in your work, in your life, that you have to act like that, or you have to carry yourself like that. Do you have to be that person, or is that a better choice, like a better, better outcome? So that, that's the best part about following your true heart. That means you're not fooled to the rules of the world. You understand what happens to the world. I'm now talking about using the Dharma into the world, using your wisdom, wisdom the use of the wisdom. You are not fooled about what's going on in the world, requirement of the world, how things work, the rules and regulations, but you're also still true to your heart. You're not twisted. You're not becoming superficial. You're not becoming someone different. You're still you. You're still very um, pursuing the truth, but at the same time, you understand how much you have to push for. Sometimes you just gotta have to put up some of the performance, even for monk. They have to appear sometimes in front of everyone like that to inspire confidence. But then in real life, it's just normal. Like someone like Master Xie Wu or Master Ching Kong, they have to go up on stage. They have to perform. Perform doesn't mean it's fake. Perform means you have to you have to sell up a certain image. Like those things are wisdom. You have to use that image to drive people towards the down. Then it's good. So this is where it's useful in your life. How do I use this in my life? When do I use this? Because like, like it's a leader, right? In your work, you gotta have to put up some sort of confidence. You can't, just, you can't be sitting there and say, I don't know what, what's going on. And then everyone's looking at you like, mate, I need you to approve my work. So if you don't know what's going on, how do I know what's going on? You gotta have to put up, like, even I don't know, but I'm, you have to like, I'll sort it out. You go ahead. Then you figure it out in behind the scenes, stuff like that. So those things are needed in your real life. It comes to me in work, right? I just realized. I'm not a leader yet, but I hope I've, I've never been in that position. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you're the leader as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you have to not appear knowledgeable, but you still have to like, yeah. I'll handle this, and then you find out what's going on behind the scene. You can't just- Like I said, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you can just say you don't know, right? Yeah. That's good. Depends. Um, maybe I can be egoistic, or who knows. Um, but yeah, the point is, you have to understand end of this 
performance on stage in this life, we have to go back. We, have, we cannot go too far. You can stray a bit, but you have to come back. All right? People like Master Hai Xian, they go straight. They don't even go about left and right. They go straight. People slap him, the young people that slap him because he's like, Master Hai Xian is from China. He is praised by Master Qin Kong for being true to the Dharma, even though he's gone through cultural revolution, he's gone through the um, humiliation by the young electricians, he's going through all sorts of political and uh, real life struggles, his heart remains true. How? He donates all his proceedings to the people. He goes to the country's um, taxation office, donate all his crops to the people affected by the, by the disasters. So this is a wise person, a person who follows the Dharma, how he do it. And he opened up a lot of unused lands by his own self over 90 years, I think. Since Man Qing Dynasty, maybe early nationalist era into the modern days. So he, he able to do this because his heart has no selfishness in it. So that's, that's the sign of a person who follows the Dharma. All right, without further ado. And yes, the last one is life and death and trap those who attach to the ego and the phenomenon. That's why I have to take another session for this because we should not skip this one. We should not just carry through this one like as if nothing. So this is the core. How can one leave impurities behind? Yes. How does one attain quenching of sufferings? All right. Who drowns in sea of samsara and who roams the land of liberation? Who drowns in the sea of samsara? The Buddha said, Life and death entraps those, the sea of samsara entrap those who attach to the ego, to the wozi, and the dharma, the phenomenon. Dharma in this case means everything happens to you. Right? In science we call it the phenomena. So everything, including the human factor, the natural factor. There's two types, right? Human phenomenon, relationships, politics, blah 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 love, hate, blah, 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 and then the natural phenomena, you know, the signs of the world. Those N in Buddhism, attaching to Buddha Dharma is also an issue when you reach that level. You should use that. It's your boat. You need to cross the, you need to cross the creek. Use it. Learn it. Follow it. Guide by it. You know, even take it at face value. doesn't matter. Learn it. Until you reach that level of maturity, let it go. And then you have to, only then you can be flexible to absorb, to use the Dharma truthfully, flexibly. You can use it alive. Um, you can use it flexibly. Flexibly, yeah. You can very, be very flexible. Because the person who actually understand the Dharma as flexible. Flexible does not mean twist the rule or, you know, like, you know, drink, break the precepts. It's, sometimes they do appear because of the condition, but they follow the dark, they follow the precepts without being like rigid. But then if you don't be rigid, how do you be? In the beginning of your of your growth, you need to be rigid. You need to follow everything so that you can grow and become strong. And once you become strong, you can use it properly. And once you become more and more wise in using it, what you learn and all the all the knowledge you have, that's when you become more skillful and Kind. And that's the trap. If you become twisted and you leave, uh, you depart from your heart and you follow the, how do I say, you follow the, you know, uh, the temptation on the outside, then your strength is used to a futile end because it was based on nothing. It was not based on your true self. If it's based on true self, you use your strength to help more people or maybe help another sproutlings to grow. Or like what Master Hai Sen did. Right. Basically, life and death is trapping those people who get caught up in there. You have to get back to your roots. You have to go stronger. You have to grow more, how to say, firm and mature. But you also need to retain that night, the purity of the heart, no matter how powerful you are. You still have that 赤子之心,不能失去那个. You cannot lose that innocence, that purity, no matter what happened. Because you must understand good and bad, Dirty or clean, right? Now we're talking about 
don't attach to the Dharma. Like Bodhisattva Guan Yin talks about that in the Heart Sutra. Buko Bujing, Bujeng Bujian, right? No add, no loss, gain and loss, dirt and purity. They're all part of your heart. Even the worst part in hell, the worst crime in humanity, is also part of part of the projections from the twisted projection from the heart. Right? The one that project properly, even though it's not the real thing, it's close to the real thing, is the one that is good. So kindness, purity, compassion is the projections, the correct projections. The inverted or the twisted projection is those that is opposite, the, the evil stuff, you know, the killings, the, all these things, you know, like betrayal and etc, etc, etc. So nothing escapes your true heart. The real thing is just the real thing. It doesn't have good, bad. It's just pure, it's just static, not static. It's dynamic, but it's pure. That's why when you go to pure land, it's... It's not that. It's not just you sit there and then Buddha talk to you and then you be like, like that. But it's you sit there, Buddha talk to you, and then at the same time you go to other pure land. Or you go to other here. You come back here as well. Maybe as one of the aunties that you never know. You never know. Or one of the uncles. You never know among you as well. Who knows? Right? Even not like this. You don't know. It's like, why, why is this there and then, and then it's gone? Who knows? They can appear as anything, even this. They can uh, inspire you. As long as they inspire you. It's one of those games. Right? Sorry, guys. They inspire you, like you look at the flower. Everyone cannot see the flower. You look at the flower, suddenly you get enlightened. That's Buddha. Buddha does not say a living and a non living being. It's one. That's, so, that's why I'm calling it it's so flexible. The closer you are to the truth, the more flexible you are, the more alive you are. Look at the, you know, the laughing Buddha? He's flexible as well. Right? Look at the Qigong. Very famous. I don't know how to say it in English. It's very famous in Chinese um, circle. There is one monk that's like Arahant. He's actually very, very uh, enlightened person. He's just appear as drunk. And then he might appear as eating meat and all that. But then everyone said, if you learn from me, you got to have to do this. Once you eat the meat, you have to omit the meat out alive. So that chicken comes into your stomach when you, you have to warm it out with live chicken. So you have to reverse the killing. So if you can do that, you eat me, like me. If you can't do that, don't eat me like me. Can you, when you eat, when you eat a beef, can you push out a cow of your mouth? No, right? Yeah. But he can. If you can do it, do it. If you can't, don't do this. Right? Don't learn from me. I only do that because of that time everyone's like that. Right? I'm showing them that path on their condition. Or, Oh, pluck the grass, that's your herbs. You're sick, that's your herbs. And then the doctor will say, I learned 20, 30 years of my learning using my brain, right? I, I understand. You just pluck the grass, wipe the sweat, and then that guy trusts you and eat it, and then he suddenly cute. <laughs> How does that work? Like, oh my God, I mean, oh my Buddha, right? <laughs> Literally, like, like, how? Incomprehensible. Because Unable to put to words, because it's, it's, it's something that is beyond your analytical mind. That is not... It's something that Buddha or people who enlighten or gain the, the you know, the fa-ying, the dharma siu, understand. You know, the kai wu, the renzi dao le. That's the whole point of enlightenment means you see what the Buddha sees. Then you're like, oh, okay. So, back to the point, right? That's wisdom. That's the usefulness of it. You, don't have, you might not be able to achieve that level, but you will find yourself in daily life, things just happen. Things just going right. Or you're just saying words that you don't know. Like, say, you just happen to say things that, that is right. Sometimes it's just beyond your cognition track, not because it's, or you, you want, there's no wandering thoughts. At that moment, it's pure. It's like, that's why we practice this as well. Like, at that, we're going to concentrate our mind to that one moment of purity. At that one moment of purity, whatever you do, you directly connect to your heart. You don't go through the, the yuan jue xing, the you know, cognitive. You don't go through the you know, greed, hatred, ignorance. This is the one that has a lot of greed, hatred, ignorance. You have to go through this, whatever behind this. You know, nen shen, nen suo liang wang. Yeah, nen suo liang wang. Yes, in Chinese. What does it mean? Nen, used. Suo, based, the, 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 the projector, 
All right, the projector and the projector. You forgot to, about two of these. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's just, yeah, incomprehensible and unable to put to words. So yeah, just keep keep going with the Dharma, right? You get excited when you get there. Um, I haven't get there yet. I'm just excited because Venerable say that. Um, the last one. All right, who drowns? No, no, no. Who roams the land of liberation? Put only the people who understand what we talk about. Law of dependent origination. We were able to roam the world freely. Law of dependent origination. Ellen, what is law of dependent origination? So technical, isn't it? It's like a sign it's like a doctor asking you about uh, uh, thyroid or something. Even that is easy. Law of dependent origination. What does it mean to you on, on the on the face of the word? Dependent. Right? I depend on you, you depend on me, right? you depend on food, you depend on oxygen, right? land, right? food that comes on the ground, everything is related. Right? Origination, like how did it happen? There are 12. Right? Wu Ming Yuan Xing. Chinese word, I'll be honest, if you can learn, right? Learn it. It's so easy. It's, it's designed for memorizing. Wu Ming Yuan Xing, Xing Yuan Si. 四,名色,六入,处,受,爱,取,有,生,死 Right? Wu Ming, ignorance. Ignorance means you lost sight of yourself. What, who is yourself? This is not yourself. This is going to be, this is going to go into the, to, uh, to the ground very soon, in 80 years or 50 years. This is not self. This is the self? You know, Descartes, I think therefore I am? No. 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 How many people's ideas has been overthrown? It's not. And then what? What else? Right? The Dharma. All right. Oh, okay. I attach to this idea of the Dharma. This part of the Dharma. That's not right as well. Emptiness. I attach to emptiness. That's not you. That's just a tool for you to get out of your um, false self. The real self is just the real self. You don't want to say anything on top of it. It's just it. It's just is. All right. It is what it is. Let's leave it there. Okay. And then Wu Ming means ignorant of all this. You get stuck, you get attached. Wu Ming Yuan Xing. What is Xing? Move. Chinese. Move. Move what? What's moving? Xing means, has your thought ever stopped? No. Right? Has the world spinning? Spinning, right? This motion, this universe keep going, right? Black hole, white dwarf, brown dwarf, too much. Casca Z, I like his um, I like his cosmology stuff. And then basically it's a scientific um, channel that talks about the world. Basically you have this Milky Way, everything's keep moving, non-stop. What what makes it move? Right? Why is it keep moving? Why am I keep thinking? Why is human society keep having this cycle of war, you know, unrest, at the same time peace, comfort, and then leads to war, unrest. Why is this cycle keeps going? See? Right? See? Why? So, without ignorance, so when you're ignorant of your true self, you do all these things blindly. Not you do, as in, it just do. It just continue invoking this Big Bang, you know, expansion of universe, that means expansion of desire, expansion of... Um, Master Shingon say that. Expansion of universe is representing expansion of trouble. Because the more universe, the more trouble, right? You were supposed to have like pure land, endless bounties of land. Basically like in Bible, right? Adams and Eve, in a sense. Right? Everything is perfect, just nice. And then suddenly, oh, you have this desire. Oh, you want this, you want that. You want to do this, you want to do that. And then suddenly you want, you want this patch of land is mine. This patch of land is yours. In, in the Buddha Sutra dimension, in the beginning, no one's carving tian. No one's carving what? This is mine, this is yours. Everyone just take food from the ground because food is abundance, right? And they don't even need to rely on this. They just attach to the notion of that. And then they get more and more craving and craving and craving. So ignorance, movements, movements of thought, movements of the universe. Shi, right? As it crystallizes, it becomes consciousness, which is uh, Maitreya Buddha's, uh, Ma, um, Ma, um, Buddha Shaimuni asked Bodhisattva Maitreya. What is this? Consciousness. 
And this consciousness, break it into very fine, you can say, we don't have time, but there are eight categories, easy. Five senses, the science has covered it. Six senses, psychology has covered it. Six senses are quite common in our communities. And then we have the subconsciousness, seven and eight. Right? The eight is the library. They have no distinguish. It's just hard disk drive. The seventh is the, is the one that say good, bad, stuff like that. Up, down, left, right. I want this, I don't want this. The sixth is just an analytical person. Oh, pink, green, black, wood. It's just a, it just put it into category. It's not good or bad. Black is black. But then when you go to US, oh black. Or means white means oh who's doing that? Seven consciousness. Oh, this means connotation, blah blah. In the Buddha's eye, sentient beings. Right? Forgot his self. His self is there. And he forgot. He think he think this little miserable projection is himself. And then he makes himself even more miserable by thinking himself miserable. So depression is also the same thing. Unfortunately, that is a strength. That is the movement that you cannot stop. It presses you so much. Only when you have precepts, samadhi, concentration, and wisdom that takes hard work, you have to go against the grain, basically. Right? Our, our tendency, which is 12 dependent origination, why it is so deep, is to go towards what is pleasurable. Right? because we want to escape from suffering. But we didn't understand the cause of suffering is because we pursue a different, a wrong kind of pressure. We, we follow the surface, the five senses, not the, the true pure land. All right, um, okay. Wu Ming Yuan Xing, Xing Yuan Shi, okay, consciousness. Ming Se, form, right? Body, eyes, nose, all right? All the organs, everything, right? Universe, there's earth, right? There's formation of earth, there is uh, mercury from the molten metal into life supporting device and then eventually destruction and then gone and then start again the cycle so means sir liu ru what is liu ru liu ru right we start to capture image it's very more and more sophisticated so to speak think of our ancient society and modern society we're getting more sophisticated is that a good thing we shouldn't say either right you say bad thing, should we go back to cave and continue? No. If you say it's a good thing, what's happening to the people's society nowadays compared to the old times? So, we have to look at it both ways. So back to the point. Liu Ru, you're getting more sophisticated. Your eyes can see, your nose, you, your nose is different shading. Everyone is separating the task. Liu Ru, but I need to read further on that. So Ming Se is form. Liu Ru is a six entry way, stimuli. Right? So once you have the stimuli, you have a stimulant. Is it? Stimuli is what? So if I say ear is the hear, sound is the stimuli, right? Yeah. Sound stimulates my hearing. Form stimulates my sight. You know, color stimulates my sight. So basically there is um there is a contact between your eye and the light and that form, okay, I'm very technical now. This, this means origination, right? It started into, you, you, you like this form, right? No, that time is only the sixth consciousness. You see a person, you see a thing. So contact. So after you have form, you have the, um, the you have the organs, whatever, the, um, the, the five, five senses, yes, senses. You have the stimuli that stimulates your senses, right? Chu, right? And you can go further. It's a little root. Chu, show. So when you contact with the stimulant or whatever, you have feelings. You have, you feel, oh, hot, cold, light, dislike, or oh, this words goes to my sound and then I analyze it, sarcastic, being mean to me, blah, 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 oh. Okay, so, and then what? Chu, so, I. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, that, 
that is um that is the five skanda. But um yeah we we if we follow that twelve origination, yeah sorry man. Not not that one. So when you have stimuli, you feel, you contact, you feel, alright? Once you feel, you hate or dislike. You analyze, you you become I like this, I don't like this. Okay. And then chew. I like, I want, I take. Alright? Me one, me take. Alright? Take or the other way, you can go the other way. This person, I don't want this. Broccoli, right? Broccoli. Oh. And then, of course, I make a very small, small, small um, example. But I can be human, right? Like, I don't like this person. Get out. Something like that. And then what? I chu yo, right? When you get, you own. Once you own, you want to keep. Alright, you want to keep, you want to like, okay, this is mine. Don't touch mine. Alright? And then, there's life. Things go grows, right? You say husband and wife, they have a kid, so they want this. Or you know, laws and order is needed. Lawyer, right? Why? Why why is law formulated? So this is mine. You don't take what is mine. See? Law. Even the rules in the house, right? Your brother and you, you have a toy, right? This is mine. Right? The mom's like if your mom didn't set any rules or anything, like you have to, you know. Um, this is your brother's. I bought it for your brother's, right? If your wife, of course. But there are times where you just take your brother's toy. Fight, right? So if there's no rule, fight. So this is, you know, yo, you own this, and then you have life, and then you have death, life and death, life and death, and then from death, start again, until we understand, we understand our true heart. I can't describe true heart. So, Amitabha Buddha is praised by all Buddhas. Why? Because he able to crystal, he able to help us to express what is true heart. Right? Even we don't understand all of it. Right? You don't need to understand all of this. You don't need to understand the, the principle of you know making chips or principle of making camera. You just need to know how to unlock, and then take photos, or and then call. That's it. That's what Buddha did. All these theories you can learn. Not theories, they are important because you will be creating a pure land one day. But you can only do that when you have in front a lifetime. Right? Don't do that with only 80 years of hopefully 100 years, guys. Live longer than me, please. Um, 100 years of lifetime. Right? It's not enough. Come on, man. It's not enough. Even 200 years is not enough. Alright, so I'll conclude this here. This is why oh, Venerable Katyayana is like so amazed. Right? Buddha has said this that no one can ever able to say. I able to say it because I hear all, all the masters talking to me about this online. Right? We learn by listening to them. So so he's amazed. So do I. I'm amazed. It just makes sense. A lot of things make sense. And then he becomes a Buddha's follower. He's just like, okay, you're my boss. I will learn from you. Um, because he's very good. That's all it is. And we will not continue any further because it's already 1.30 or 12.30. So before that, any um, anything else to say? So I have a question. Yes. Maybe you'll mention in the next learning. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned there's a form thing and there's a circle and we're always going around the circle. Yeah, it's a circle. So what's the key to break the circle? Ignorance. Once ignorance to is not there. break the circle. Yeah. Okay. That means... If you want to put it in technical term, in the simple term, just chant Amitabha for. Ah. And if you go to pure land, you break it. Yeah. Mm. In the more technical term for people who's like, ah, Amitabha for, that's it? Well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, think of ignorance, right? We already say like, ignorance is like, it's alright, feel free. Um, ignorance is like, it's like your cloud is blocking your sun. What can you do? Right? Oh, get off. No, it will block. But when it blocks, it will go away as well. The problem is if we are stuck looking at the reflection of the sun, not looking at the sun, that's the problem. We look at the reflection, we like, ooh, you know, like, this is me, you know, this is all my past life. Oh, this is 
this is the relationship, this is the problem, this is the troubles. But then, when you die, you can't keep all of them. But then you're stuck. Oh, this is my um, mom. Now I need to, like, she's reborn, I'll follow her. Stuff like that. Sometimes it's not even lucid. Right? Master Ching Kong has mentioned one word, we should change the word. Not Ling Hun, Yu Hun in Chinese, soul. Right? Soul. Ling it means intelligent soul. Intelligent soul will always pick, I want to be born as the son of the president. I want to be born as the son of Warren Buffett. Why do I want to be born into the normal family? Right? Of course I want to be, go to Warren Buffett's house and become their son so that I can inherit the wealth. Sure. Or I was born into a, someone who can be a great person in future so I can continue his work. But that's on the condition of you're aware of what's going on. Right? The problem is we are not aware of what's going on. That's the ignorance. We are not aware of what's going on. We are like, huh? And then when you see something you like, you just go into it. What defines what you like? Everything you do right now, right, is accumulation of your past. And everything you do now is the indication of your future. You like this one thing. You like this, say you like money. You like um, women or men. You like um, power. Or whatever is you obsess over will be the very cost of your reward. Attachment. Attachment. The one that is so strong that you cannot live without. Or you thought you cannot live without. Mm -hmm. That's why we are here, not just sit here and listen to the Dharma. And talk. The whole point of doing this, going to the temple, listen to masters or having this discussion, is, you know, this is not something I can live. This is not things that I live without. The things I live without is myself, my real self. They are the creator of it, misery and joy. Who creates it? My ignorance creates it. My ignorance of my true self with abundance of merits and virtues. Why do I need to create something here when I already have everything inside me? And I don't want to make it so abstract because it's something very real. right? So think of the times when you're actually not looking and actually content and actually doing your stuff. Things just flow. Think of the moment you have a flow. No matter what you're doing, in assignments, in work, in you know, engaging with people, if the flow is there, we, we call it a flow, a flow state. If the flow is there, it just works. But then, we can't, we can't preserve the flow. The problem is like that. We, 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 we introduce all these thoughts, concepts, me, or you and I, and like this, something like this that disrupt the flow. But then outside factor also disrupt your flow. And then once disrupted, it's very hard for us to find back that connection. And then we're like, oh, caught up in things. And then here we are. Yeah, so this is the hard, this is the homework. Well, our homework is, how can I replace, how can I have Ami Tofu, right? Replacing whatever Ellen is doing, right? Whatever Ellen is doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. It's okay. I was like that. I'm, I move a lot. Not I was, I still am like that. I move a lot. You can see my hand. I'm like Italian. Sorry guys. I love my Italian friends. But um, like, you know, move, move a lot. You know? There's a lot of movements, a lot of uh, random thoughts and ramblings. But then you have to pull yourself back. This is, this is pure land. Or this is my ground. This is my home. I will go back to my home. Right? I will not leave my home. But how real am I when I say that? Okay, you want to leave? Your, you want to go back to your home? Are you willing to let go of all this? Eh, that's a test. Eh, are you willing to let go? Uh, are you willing to um, hold yourself like accountable when you face this desire? Ah, ah, you're like ah, okay. Then you can't say anything because you're like yeah, I might actually fall for it. So what are you gonna do when you fall for it? Right? There are rules, regulations that Confucius is trying to introduce. Right, it's like, okay, fine. You can't hold yourself very high standard and can't reach that. Now you ask yourself, what is the bottom line? Right, what? The five precepts, right? How to be a human? How to be a good human? And that's not enough though for Pure Land. Pure Land is you gotta have to let go when time is right, right? It does not stop you from going towards the direction of having family and stuff like that. But then you still have to think about these things are important, but we cannot rush it. At the same time, we cannot just say, okay, I'm going to go pure land, doesn't matter. I just need to do whatever. No, you still have to keep in mind. Okay, I still have to come here, I still have to remind myself. 
I mean, remind myself primarily by having this. All right, that's the most important point, right? I can't say I remind you guys. Like I don't know your condition. All I can say is I bring out the understanding. My condition happens to be right for this, so I do it. So it happens to help you guys. So you guys are here. So the condition is met. We're here. And then you guys have to take it and use this as your condition to enlightenment. That's why Buddhism is empowering. It's not just you rely all. Yes, rely all on Amitabha. If you can, rely 100% on him. Why? What other benefit he has for you? Going through the trouble of showing you all this. He could have enjoyed his life there. But the whole land was created for you. Just you, not Dylan. Just you, Jen. Just you, Jen. Just you, Emily. Just you. Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> Maggie. Just you. How? Oh my God. Just you, Alan. Just you. Just you, right? Just me, Dylan. Right? Pure land is only for me. But who is me? <laughs> Rush hour. Who are you? Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> me is me. Who is you? Um, me is you. You is me. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yes, rush hour. Who are you? You is me. Me is you. Right? My name is you. What's your name? Your name is me. Anyway, that's a joke. But the point is, you and I are one, basically. Right? Having said that, right? That's a theory. Oh, you and I are one. So whatever you have, I have. Can I? Can I take your uh, bank account? No, right? So, see? That's the dilemma. At the same time, it is, a, it is your condition. You can't just say, okay, you can. Of course you can. There are people who can do that. Right? I will let go of everything. But then, does it help that person? Or make them more greedy? Right? If it helps, you might as well set up a trust and give up everything. Go to become a monk. Or you can let, like, Master Zongmeo Senpose to leave his money behind to set up a, a Buddhist club in UK. I was benefited by it. Right? So I service the people while still being late all the time. You can see my pattern right now. But anyway, I'm still trying to service that community. So the condition, you create a condition for a better condition for others. Right? So learning 12 dependent origination is not just for book. It's not just for debate. Right? Kaya Kana is trying to bring it out like this. Like, like you ask, I tell, and then you're like, mm, mm. and then what, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Right? And then I can act on it. I can use it. I can use it now. Right? Why, why do we wait until we last breath to, to pray for Amitabha? Before, why don't we do it as we can in our condition right now? As much as we can. That's the powerful part. That's the part we need to say. Buddhism is not about hiding in a jungle. A lot of people say, oh, you hide in a jungle. Meditate. No. Now. Alright, guys. Um, any more questions? No. I hope it works. Uh, does it help? Yeah. Yeah. I'll finalize this. Any any questions? Any any more ideas? Ellen, any ideas? <laughs> we should go, right? It's it's too long already. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Last word. Um I'm really bad at memorizing the actual term. Actually, I always memorize the meaning, not the word. <laughs> that's good. Um You're not attached to it. Yeah. That's the problem. In my work I, I need to attach to it. I got penalized for this. Um, bank. Anyway, um, what's the last one? So what we do is those teachings, those theories, you can understand right now. Okay, you can attain the understanding right now. But you need to take your life to walk the talk. Basically, you can understand the theory right now. You can understand this right now, like what I'm talking about. I kind of understand, not really. But it takes actual life experience, right? Like this experience. Let it come in, let it simmer down, and then you'll be like, hmm. Like now when I talk about child dependent origination, it's slightly more more real. Hi Alex. More real than than say ten years ago. Ten years ago it sounds like a very nice theory that makes sense to me. Now it sounds like okay, now I can use this. Which part can I stop myself from suffering? I'll stop myself from suffering by not getting too much attached to the words I hear. Right? Or uh, I'll stop myself from overly attached 
by understanding everything is subject to change. Right? The emotion I have received from that person that I care about is genuine, but at the same time, it's subject to change. So I don't want to put too... I will be sad, I'll be broken, and blah, 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 but I will understand this is the way of the world. And I, I'll heal better. I'll get better. I'll get more and more. Not in, you should not close your heart. You should not close. That's ignorance. You should open. But at the same time, you should... You'd be wiser now. You'd be like, okay. Everything is subject to change. Right? Appreciate now. Appreciate the moment you have with this family. One day they might go in their own direction. Or appreciate your relationship with this person at this moment. You know, things might change. Do your best to set up a good condition for each of us. That's how you do it. So walk the path that you have set takes a lot of effort and it will go curveballs. Curveballs will happen. So allow curveball to happen to reveal itself. The truth, if it's the truth, if it's a, like Buddha say verify it, if it's the truth, it will make itself known. The thing is it's time. It takes time to reveal it. Sometimes we get colored by emotions, we can't see it. Right? We just want to get out of it. But then when you cool down, you will see it. Buddha does not lie and and yes, he's pointing out the best path for us. No matter how, how bad, how sad, how terrible things is, as long as we rely on someone who actually knows what's going on for you, not just big things, you, why you face this person, why you face this condition, that person can solve for you. The thing is, it's, it's not now, you can't. Because now you're clouded by emotion and judgments. Even I tell you, even I appear as Buddha and tell you, you might not listen to right? When your condition is right and you have that faith in the Buddha, you will know. You just know. You don't, don't need someone else to point it out. You just know. You're like, oh, okay. All right, guys. Um, we'll end this here. And uh, we'll just pray to the Buddha. Is Emily all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll just pray for um, Buddha three times. Uh, we'll end this with 10 times Amitofo and then we pray for the Buddha. Amitofo. 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 Amitof